We start off with a make or break moment for the market as it remains under pressure. Earnings season. Will it be earnings season to the rescue? The season kicking into full gear this week as the market fights back against rising rates, trade woes, and higher input costs as inflation fears threaten to become a reality. So is a gangbuster earnings season enough to crush all of these worries? And can earnings season really reignite this rally? Guy. That's the hope. And, but it's not just earnings season. I think earnings are going to be fine. I think it's just what they say going forward, which is going to be important. And I'm not convinced that companies are going to give Great guidance going forward. One of the reasons, because they probably can't. Second reason is because they don't have to in this environment. So I think that's what we're up against. I think the wild card for the market, though, continues to be if President Trump and China can pull off some trade agreement. I think that would be extraordinarily bullish, at least in the short term. So I think the market has to hope for that or maybe hope for a Fed that sort of backs off and gets a little more dovish, although long term I think that's bad. Those are the two things I would put ahead of earnings because, although, again, I think earnings would be good. I don't think it's enough. So it's a no. They yeah. will not well, reignite this no. route. See, we no, do no, a TV well, show I just for want to make sure. And if hey, I, let's play again. I'm just no. trying to bottom to line this for the viewers. It's Grasso. No. See, there you oh, go. I forgot and why, Grasso? Now. Nothing <laughs> trumps <laughs> rates. Nothing trumps rates. This okay. was about a rate sell-off. Mm -hmm. Not about anything else. Not about earnings. Netflix, the most important print of the earnings season. Tomorrow. Tomorrow. We'll wow. know tomorrow. Cool. Really? Well, I, I agree with Steve, uh, at least on the rate side. I'm not sure if it's the most important for the, the entire season. And I agree with Guy that I think there's a lot of uncertainty. But remember, we were doing this after Q1 and we were doing this after Q2. Each one of these quarters, earnings were supposed to save this market. And actually, you know, at certain times, they actually did. So when it comes down to it, people are going to look at valuations. They're going to look at where the S&P is on a, on, a, on a relative basis to itself and where it is in a Fed hiking environment and say, actually, these multiples look OK. Um, I do believe that China is not going to be reconciled. Every headline on China should be one that's, if it's bullish, that should be one to be faded. But I do think that there are numbers within the earnings season that are going to matter a lot, and there are sectors that are going to outperform. And, and, you know, look at Staples so far. I realize that it hasn't been a great show, but the outlook to me for companies who rely on commodity prices and who would have concerns on trade hasn't been awful. Yeah. Karen? Uh, well, I, I think the Fed absolutely has to continue with the rate rise, re the rate rising plan, regardless of some volatility in the market. So I hope that the market really still expects that. I think that it reflects the expectation of another hike, and we'll see for next year. I don't think that that should be the catalyst for the sell-off, for a sell-off. I really don't. The Fed won't be the catalyst for the sell-off, is it? And I think, you know, the bad news, good news question, if the Fed stops, uh -huh. That yeah, but is it, the question is, do earnings overpower the rate fears that the market is if they're experiencing good, yes. right now? I think if they're good, yes, they do. And if, if they're, not, if they're, they're bad, not. if we hear, I mean, if we hear from corporations with their guidance for 2019 that things are looking slow, that there is a distinct slowdown in the consumer, that, you know. Oh, that's going to be terrible. That would be terrible. <laughs> does, 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 does that cause yeah, the Fed yeah, to pause? No, absolutely well, not. It, it, it no. gives them cover in this market anymore. Yeah, but by Tim, the way, there Tim does it be. give them cover? It gives them cover if they would like to skip. I think they could skip one cycle if the earnings are terrible or if the guidance is terrible. The earnings are not going to be terrible. I, guidance I, might be terrible. I just think that the, the, you know, the Fed is staring at a couple of dynamics that I, I think they haven't seen in a while. I, I think we're starting to get that Phillips curve. Remember the relationship between unemployment uh, and inflation? And it's starting to, starting to wake up. The ECB, of all people, is actually talking about that. Uh, but I, I, I just think we have core PPI. We actually have energy prices that are higher. Um, we're seeing this trickle through. This labor force is as tight as we've, I would argue, Why we've ever Why can't the Fed seen. just skip one round? The, you know what we never talk about? $50 billion per month coming off the Fed's balance sheets. But that, you're, you say that like it's a you, surprise. Like do, they, does anyone, do, like but they, if you like look they, at the yield curve, it's been happening and escalating. This, and by the way, this is where $50 billion starts. So you're it saying it's been tightening on its own even without the Fed. Yeah. It started yeah. $10 yeah. billion right. But they've been but telegraphing right. that. They have been telegraphing that We don't talk about years. Doing both the tightening, this is double Just tightening at this point. Talk about it doesn't mean it's a surprise. But the market, we we all act surprised that is the rates rising for the right reasons. But we still have negative real rates, Steve. We're still at neutral at best, and I, you know, the Fed needs to get to a place where actually, you know, real rates offer people something. But right now, we're not even at an equilibrium. Right now, they, you know, they've taken accommodative out of their wording. But the bottom line here is this is not. This is not policy that, that's, that's restrictive right now. I have not a question yet. for you guys. Show of hands, please. Mm, okay. Thank you. Will, well, earnings teach, season, will, teachers er, in. will earnings season be a reason, or, or ca could earnings season be an input as to whether or not the Fed raises interest rates? Show of hands. Yes? Will, will I'm closing season, my eyes. Is anyone earnings, else raising their hand? <laughs> will Dude, you are so out there by yourself. The by the way, You're the only one. For you, You're though. the only one. Yeah. So let's say guidance guy, comes in really badly. The Fed stays on its path. Listen, I mean, it's been about input... 
inflation has been the reason companies are saying the input costs are going up. That's why I, I don't some agree with that. But that's some companies have said. So, well, okay. Let's put it this way. It should not, to answer your question, it shouldn't be. The market should have nothing to do with it. Now, whether it does or not, I have no idea. But to your point, real rates in this country are flat. You can make a compelling argument that in the greatest They're economy negative. in the history. They're negative. Negative. They're and negative. should they have a 5% And real Fed inflation. Funds. Real inflation is not scary, right? Five-year, 10-year break-evens, they're not scary. So uh, if look, we're raising. I think, I think our, our, your father's, my father's inflation, in other words, inflation of yesteryear is something that I think was scarier than possibly the prospect of what we are looking at now. I do think there are deflationary forces out there that ultimately could make this a very different dynamic. The Fed is looking at PCE. They don't see PCE as being anywhere close to overheating. And that's, you know, these are some of the smartest economists in the world. Can we so show an after hours chart of Adobe? Because that stock is spiking. Um, good guidance in the after hours session. So we, you can sort of pick your, your poison in terms of guidance that so we're saying, here we go, up 5.5%. Guy, what did you make of this? Do you think that this is any sort of extrapolation? I haven't, I, look, I'm going to be honest with you. I haven't read it, so I can't, I can't look at it and speak intelligently about it. What I'll tell you is Adobe probably topped out around $285, and you've seen a pretty precipitous decline. I'll go back and read now, but maybe this is just sort of a bounce back off a day when it's down 4.5%. We basically just got back, I think, what we lost today.